Hello, hello. <clears throat> Excuse me, Polygra friends. I hope we're doing well today. Aaron here. I'm gonna be, uh, well, first of all, it is your weekly reminder that it is Monday. You're welcome. Uh, number two is uh, today I am streaming much earlier than I normally do. My stream is normally at 3.30. But today I have a very important appointment this afternoon that I cannot miss, and that is for my hair. <laughs> so uh, I was like, you know, I'll still stream today because I, I missed uh, Thursday last week, um, unfortunately. So uh, I was like, I don't want to miss two streams in a row. So I was like, ah, we'll do an AM, a morning stream. So hopefully you have your coffee or your tea, or maybe you don't have caffeine, and that's okay too. I have my uh, my tea on my desk over there and it's a uh, licorice tea this morning I don't think there's caffeine in it but it's fine I already had two caffeinated teas today I don't think I need any more caffeine or my hand won't work properly yay uh, so yeah today we're gonna be continuing on with my lettering lyrics series but today I'm gonna be using a different tool and it's a glass pen fun I don't normally use it it's uh it's kind I mean okay how do I want to say this it's kind of gimmicky but it's kind of fun um, because it's, it's, because it's only, it, it's not like a flexible tip, like a normal nib would be. Uh, it's pretty monoline, but you can make some fun stuff with it and you can use ink like, or, or paint like you would with anything else. So, you know, we'll try that out. I, uh, I started lining my paper already because I'll be working on black paper with white ink. So I'll have some nice contrast. We'll hopefully be able to pick it up on the camera without too much trouble. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. I'm just gonna be, right now I'm lining my paper. Very entertaining stuff, but that's okay. So let me just, let me, there we go. So you can see I started lining my black paper already. Uh, if you're ever wanting to work on black paper, by the way, this is, this is what most people use. It's a Fonz and Porter clicky pencil. You get them at fabric stores because technically this is like fabric, uh, like a fabric pencil or something for like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? For like uh, garments, like when you're, when you're marking fabric that you have to cut on your, like with your scissors and make, I don't know, shorts or something. Um, but a lot of calligraphers use exactly this because it's not, a super thick lead it's just like a thin lead so you can just kind of line it somewhat quickly because I can't use my light pad underneath this obviously um, there we go uh, I'll be, yeah obviously I can't use a light pad underneath this because the paper's opaque it's black so oh yeah you can see my T on my bottom camera right here just hanging out so now let's continue with making my lines so today's lyrics are gonna be, you know, Paramore, since that's what I'm, I'm working through. And it's gonna be brighter. I don't think this one went out on the radio, but we're, it's gonna be that guy. Uh, the lines, by the way, that I'm doing, I think, I think they're a quarter inch. I normally don't work with inches. It's just, this is the easiest ruler I have to work with um, like black paper. It's the easiest one I can just go somewhat quickly because I don't have, there's like rulers that you can get that are for calligraphy that um, have like uh, dots in them and you can like align things much faster. I just don't have that. So this is the easiest thing I have. And this one only comes in, I don't know, American sizing. I don't know what metric there's, I don't know. I usually work in millimeters and this is in inches. So I think I think this is a quarter inch height, which is kind of big to be honest as well, but I didn't feel like trying to figure out a different way to do this and this is faster, so. So this is probably gonna be kind of like watching paint dry, to be honest, just watching me line this, but that's all right. The hardest thing about lining paper this way um, because obviously the lead that's in here is kind of soft 
So what happens when you're using it is that it gets um, kind of thick when you if you press too hard. And what happens is like the line can sometimes obscure like the angle in which you're trying to line things up with. But it is what it is. Because like ideally the line would be as thin as possible to be as accurate as possible when you're doing your lettering. But we make do with what we have. I know some people use um, laser, like laser liners that you can get at like Home Depot or Rona if you're in Quebec. They're like, um, I think they're meant for like drywall. It's like a, a box and it has like a laser pointer and it goes across and it would, it, obviously you can see that on top of black paper. I just don't have one. Also, don't worry about being able to erase the lines on the black too. Super easy because it's such a soft lead. I think it's almost chalk in here. I actually don't even know. I just You just take a kneaded eraser and just lightly go over and it comes off pretty fast. Oh yeah, and it was also Easter this weekend. So happy Easter if you celebrate. Sorry. My head smacked the my iPad. Um, honestly, I because I don't have kids, I kind of forget that it's Easter. I feel like my friends who are parents remember that it's Easter, but because I don't have children, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's Easter this weekend. I totally forgot. So we had uh, to try and be somewhat uh, <clears throat> thematic with Easter and a little bit traditional. We had to get some ham from the grocery store and uh, like a big honkin' like ham, I don't even know, it's like smoked ham, it's freaking huge. We have like a ton now in our freezer that we uh, sealed in like a, like vacuum sealed so it, it stays good longer but we had so much because it's just me and my husband so we had the ham sandwiches for lunch yesterday. So that was, you know, that was as thematic as we got, which is kind of funny. So we did that. And we had, uh, like, internet lunch with his mom and aunt. Like a video chat with them while we ate. Because we still can't have people over here. So, you know, we try and try and make do with what we can you know being under lockdown and stuff but the weather has been getting more and more beautiful which is wonderful so yesterday afternoon <laughs> very funny I actually went rollerblading for the first time obviously since last year because it's been <clears throat> there's still been snow and stuff on the ground so yesterday was the first nice day where I was like oh you know it's like 13 degrees uh, Celsius and but it's really sunny which is like kind of good, good weather to do a bit of a you know get a workout going plus of all the exercises one can do, I thoroughly enjoy uh, rollerblading just because it's fun. Should a 32-year-old turning 33 this year be rollerblading? Maybe not. I don't heal as fast as I used to when I was like 15. But uh, I mean, I, I really, I like it. I think it's really fun because I don't, I hate jogging. It's, it's like the, give me an activity that I hate more than jogging and I'm not sure I'd be able to think of one just not a fan plus it's not I because I'm heavy it's not good for my knees um, plus I've, I've had uh, I've twisted my knees and I have some scar tissue in there from other injuries from when I used to play softball so like jogging on asphalt has nev never been something that's particularly fun for me <laughs> um, plus it's like really hard on my feet and all that stuff but rollerblading is really like at least for me it's very very low impact and I get a good a good workout going so this morning I woke up because I I've been a lazy piece of shit like all winter pretty much and I have no one to blame but myself for that <laughs> but uh, 
very yo I got winded so fast it was kind of crazy um it was kind of like eye opening of like oh god I really need to be better at um being slightly more physical at least at least slightly but as I was going like because it's it's such a lower body but it's kind of like a full body workout like when you're going my my hips were like we don't normally work this direction because like your your hips are like moving out to push right so I'm like I woke up this morning and was like ooh old lady Erin has come to ch ch come to the chat right now very fun but you know I, I don't feel completely destroyed which is good because I was gone for like like an hour and it was I think 10 10, 12 kilometers I went? Something like that. Something along those lines. Um, and I know that because it's it, the route I went was the route that I used to go on all the time uh, last year. Because I used to go a couple times a week. Um, I just forgot to put it on my, to like track it on my phone. Uh, yesterday I forgot to turn on the, like the GPS thing for like the map my, uh, map my run or map my map my exercise something like that I have it on my phone I just forgot to turn it on before I left but yeah something like something like 12 kilometers maybe I did it in like an hour I didn't go super fast I didn't like go crazy on the way before turning back until I uh, am a dum dum and I had forgotten completely that I had plans yesterday afternoon at like four uh, cause I'm stupid. <clears throat> and, uh, a friend of mine, it was her birthday, uh, celebration. Oh, well, sorry. It was her birthday in like February, but obviously we couldn't get together. So I had, uh, bought a paint night. Sorry. I had to get some light. Uh, I had bought a paint night for us and by paint night, like the virtual ones, I think they're by, they're by, uh, this company called Yay Maker. So like you essentially buy your your stuff, your um, like your you you buy your own canvas and and paint and stuff, acrylic paint mostly, and then uh, you get on a, like a Zoom call with like a bunch of other people, and they walk you through how to paint something. But you just do it at home. Normally you would do it like at a bar, uh, but obviously since bars are closed, can't do that. But it's a fun activity, so we did that yesterday. But I had completely forgotten because I'm a bad friend that was yesterday so I get a call slash text from her yesterday at like like quarter after four and the thing starts at four and she's like hey like are you are you coming and I was like like what are you talking about what do you mean coming where because she has a standing uh zoom call with a friend of ours and who lives uh who lives in Ireland on Sunday. So I was like, oh, was I supposed to be on that today? Like, I don't remember confirming. She's like, no, like silly for the paint thing. I was like, I completely forgot. I am, I'm out right now. I am at rollerblading. She's like, oh, I totally get it. Like, it's such a nice day. It's such a nice weather. Like, don't worry about it. And I was like, no, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna hustle home and I will catch up. I, like, I, I am determined to, to get there. She's like, oh, well, we're not very far in the in the painting so I bet you can do it I was like okay I'm on it like let's go and I motored home I I was just like get out of my way <laughs> I need to be home I think it, I got home in like 15 20 minutes for a ride that took me like 25 minutes ish and like 30 to get and I was just like I have never been so sweaty <laughs> like just out of breath like I, uh, you know, trying to make sure that I didn't uh, get into like a car accident on my on my like rollerblading home because I we have bike paths, but you, you know, not everyone pays attention to those, uh, and people can be dicks. <laughs> and you know, there were so many people outside yesterday because it was Easter, and we can't have people over, so people have their get-togethers in the parks publicly, like outside. So, so many people on the bike path, so many people outside, so many, I was like, out of my way, out of my way, I need to paint. <laughs> it was so silly, it was so ridiculous, 
but I got back at like four, I want to say like 10 to five. They'd only done a couple of pieces. It's like, it was a, 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 like a, a planter of succulents of like a big giant bowl with like three plants in it. They'd only done the bowl and one of the succulents and then I'm like, okay, I got this. Like I have a bunch of painting supplies, like I am on it and I will catch up. So I got into the Zoom call, I did it, and then I just kept caught up and then I was like, I never breathed heavily while painting, like that's crazy. Um, but yeah, that was uh, a bit stressful, but I was able to relax into it, thankfully, because like those, <laughs> those paint nights are not supposed to be stressful, right? They're supposed to be just kind of chill and fun. You know, spend time with your friends and, and hang out with them and, and do the thing, but anyways, I think it turned out pretty good. I can go grab it later after I'm done lining this, if anyone is curious, but it was definitely one of those things where I was like, oh my God, I need to check my calendar more often because I just, I was just like, oh, it's the weekend. I don't have anything because it had slipped my mind because I had um, gotten the class. I had presented her the, the gift and then she had picked her class like a while ago. So I just had completely forgotten that that was in the calendar. So thankfully she forgave me because it was just a silly mistake. And it ended up being quite fun and it was cool. Sorry. And now my paper's lined. Thanks for listening to my story. Uh, cool. But yeah, it was very fun. Paint nights are cool. If anyone's looking for an activity to do when you're just chilling, like at home or something, you know, something fun. If you have some paints or even just like pencil crown, it's kind of cool. Uh, cool, 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 cool. So I have my lyrics. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, yeah, I'm gonna do the title in like, I'm gonna try Madras, which is a like copper plate and Spencerian had a baby and exploded and it's just kind of everywhere. Let me just grab a nib in my pile. Yep, it's the right one. And so I'll be using this pen holder, which is one that has a screw so it can fit many different sizes of, of nibs because not all nibs are a standard size like this. They can be smaller. So essentially how it works is how, can, there we go. So you put the nib in and then this screw, this screw here can either be tightened or loosened depending on the size of your nib. So the reason I want to use this one is because Madras is written very flat on the page and some of my uh, pen holders like this one have a really big base here, whereas this one doesn't have so much. So I can kind of keep it really flat on the page. I hope that, that makes sense. Yeah, you'll be able to actually, you can see it with my other camera uh, on the bottom here. So like when with Madras, you're supposed to be really like flat to the page or as flat as possible. And if this pe this part of the pen holder is too big, it's hard and it, it goes up too high. So we'll see, we'll see if I can do it. It's a hand that I, I recently took classes with, with uh, open ink stand. Uh, if you follow her on YouTube or Instagram or wherever, she's quite well known. Oh, also the thing that I'm using, so I'll be using white ink. So this is, this is a fun thing. So my white ink is in here, but the white ink for, because it's not really ink, it's paint that I'm using. And when you add water to the paint, it can settle. So you'll have the paint at the bottom and the water on the top. And it's a pain in the ass to always like stir it. So it doesn't do that. So um, when there's a big enough batch of, of some kind of uh, color that I want to do, I'll put it into a jar like this. It has one of those magnets that's like, looks like a pill. And I have a magnet stirrer. And then when it turns on, the, can I see this? Or is it going to be completely blown out? Because it's white, hold on. See if I can get it spinning. There we go. So normally it 
it's just like that. But if I turn it on, there you can see the magnet spinner turning in there. So my ink is always being stirred, which is good. Uh, what I am going to do though, because it is a bit low, I'm going to add some paint to it. Alright, sorry, I just realized I'm going to put my uh, dashboard on here so just in case someone chats I can see them. There you go. A little easier for me to to see. So I don't. If if someone talks, I can I can see you guys right away. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna grab. One I'm going to use is mostly this one. It's uh, from Schmink Schminky. I just kind of pour it in there, and then I'm just going to add a bunch of water. I'll actually do it uh, here so you can see what I'm doing. I literally just added a glob there. <laughs> it's like not particularly. Uh, attractive that is for sure so it's gonna do its thing and then I have so this doesn't look clean my water it's just because my jars are stained because it's they're just plastic so they get stained from like just water being uh, dirty in there but the water itself is clean I just changed it up this morning and then I'm gonna add just a an ass ton of water <laughs> into here. Because the benefit of the calligraphy gouache, from, especially from Schminky, it's very forgiving. So it works out pretty well. So it's just doing its thing. And I'm gonna add some, this is usually the one people use a lot. It's called, usually when people do things on black or opaque paper, if they wanna use white ink, they usually use this guy, which is the Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White. Uh, I just mix them together, cause I can. So, cause this comes like it's a paste almost. Like you can't, um, you can't just use this right out of the bottle. Like you have to dilute it. So I figure, cause this is a, uh, I think this is gouache anyways. It's like an opaque, it's like, I, th I think this is gouache or just really opaque watercolor regardless, it's water soluble. So it kind of just all goes together. And then I have another white from it. It's another gouache. I just will also throw in there if I don't like the consistency. It's uh, not particularly scientific or exact, but it works for me. Also, you can tell that I don't necessarily care so much about the plastic pen holders that I have because I use them to stir my stuff all the time. Okay, I'm just gonna grab my paper towel. stir for a little bit and then I will grab uh let's see do I have any black scrap paper ah, I do perfect so I just have some scrap paper here that I'll just do some testing on to see uh, if it's the right consistency It should be okay. Well, 
like I said, the, the schminky stuff is so... It's very forgiving. Cool. Yeah, so that's like not really bleeding. It's still pretty opaque. Cool. All right, so I like that. That's a good consistency. Uh, so yeah, I was going to do the title in the Madaraz writing, which I am not particularly good at. I won't lie. But, you know, a lot of times, like, I use the, the, these streams to kind of play uh, when I'm making stuff versus being so worried about being very exact. Um, it's just easier for me because most of the stuff that I make now is for either, um, like, kind of like a marketing or a promotional kind of vibe, uh, you know, because it's a business for me or it's for clients. I don't have a lot of, mm, I don't always have a lot of options to just kind of take the time to just make something for fun. So doing the, at least the Monday streams for me is like always just like a, a, a way for me to just chill and not have too much pressure about like having to be perfect. cleaning my area <laughs> especially because I have a, a black uh, mat here it the white always hangs out way more uh, obviously than a lot of other colors all right Of my paper. I'm just going to kind of let me grab let me grab my matter as little workbook. And I say little workbook. It's a giant folder. <laughs> so like that's mat that's matter as. It's like it's big and it's fast and it's chunky. I'm just going to see quickly how the word be generally speaking is done all right also if you're gonna about to ask me did I do any warm ups warm ups this morning the answer is gonna be no <laughs> I just didn't have time so we're going in cold which is gonna be a not a great idea I can already tell you that but you know what we're here we're gonna do it we're gonna commit Forgot my tea. I already made a mistake. It's just the title, but it's alright. I can maybe fix that later. Maybe I can't. That's alright. Uh, 
that one turned out pretty much that much much better <laughs> all right cool so title done totally fucked up there of course of course i did but again today we're playing we're not taking it too serious it's all good Sorry, I just saw my phone. A friend of mine messaged me. <laughs> Apologies, I got a little distracted. All right. Uh, so yeah, so the, the script I'm actually gonna be trying because I'm gonna be using my, um, my glass pen today. Because there are no fix and fins with this guy, because it, I mean, it just, it's not how this works, right? There's no, like, it's not a flexible tip on this thing. It's glass. Um, so I'm going to try and do Spencerian, which I'm not the best at. Today's just a, be a day of uh, not the best, not, not the things I'm best at. That's okay. So I'll, I'll give you, I'll show you kind of how it works. So, you know, you just, you dip it. So it looks like this. And then it's just like a nice monoline line. But the thing is like the, the ink or the paint or whatever you're using as your medium needs to be pretty thin and pretty watery because otherwise it, this, it won't flow off of this well. It can't be thick because it'll just stick. It's not cool. So yeah, it's like I said, it's kind of gimmicky, but I kind of like it. I think it's fun. Like, do you need this to make beautiful letters? Absolutely not. But it's fun. It's fun to use. So I'm using, I have some reference sheets from a, a teacher that I had taken uh, over quarantine. Her name is Martha Lawrence. Uh, if anyone like wants to see some cool or, or learn from someone that's like amazing at Spencerian, Martha. So these are, are her like, uh, alphabet sheets of like how to make the letters because this specific um, script is kind of meant to be more monoline than copper plate is like it won't it won't look like this so I'm gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see how I can do an S I'm actually gonna keep my scrap paper here yeah all right we're good So I'll be referring back to my sheets a lot, just because it's a, it's a totally different uh, uh, motion as well. Because copper plate, which is the one I normally do, you go from under, whereas this one you're going over a lot. And it's meant to be much faster script too, so we'll see if I can make it quick. It almost feels like um, handwriting, like American cursive. Liz. Thank you for joining my stream today. I saw that you, uh, I saw on Instagram that you got raided in your last stream, I think, right? Yes, this is so different than copper plate, man oh man. We'll see, we'll see, uh, see how it turns in the end, how it turns out in the end.
That's so cool. Congrats. Congrats on the raid. Yes, the white lines are white pencil lines. Uh, because I can't use a light pad uh, on opaque paper. So I had to line my sheets before. The, uh, the tool I used to do that, by the way, is this guy, just in case you've not heard of it. It's a Fonzen Porter mechanical pencil, and the lead inside is white. It's meant for, like, fabric. You can get them at, like, fabric stores. And they come off really easy when, I, when I'm done. How do I do a W? All right. Can I actually? So there. This is supposed to be thicker. So I'm just gonna fill that in a little bit. Oh, sorry guys. Give me just one second. Sorry about that. <laughs> I had a phone call and I was my uh, the my my bird's vet, so I was like, oh no, I just needed to to help on that. Uh, yes, very easily erased. It's super super light. Um, it's almost getting rubbed off just by me being on it with my with my glove. So totally fine. Um, I usually just use a kneaded eraser to answer your question, like wherever this guy. Yep. This guy. Actually, I can show you right here. You just kind of... Or you use a black eraser, which I have, I think, somewhere in my, my tickle trunk of goodies over there. Actually, I realized, too, the S is also supposed to have a thickness right, right around here. So I'll add that. I am so not good at spin theory and I'm just like, all my ovals are all wrong. <laughs> They're all incorrect. That didn't have enough space. And this should have been up here. That's okay. The next one that has an eye, I'll do it better. Like I hope no one is trying to learn from me for spin theory on this one. It's not a good idea. So Liz, did you have a, a good Easter, if you celebrate Easter? Oh, thank you for hosting. I just saw, thank you. That's so awesome. I'm so flattered. Oh, 
good. I'm glad you found me. Welcome. <laughs> Yes, very well. Thank you for asking. Oh, thank you for following. Yay. I uh I don't normally use a glass dip pen. This is this is just like, oh, you know, let's I ha I have it, so I may as well use it. On uh, on Mondays is my lettering lyrics thing and I um I've been a fan of Paramore for a long, long time, so. Oh, fun! Do you do calligraphy, like, uh, for funsies? Glass dip pens are fun. They're cool. Like, like, uh, like I said before, like, not to be, you know, I don't want to be a meanie pants. They're kind of gimmicky, because, like, they're not really, like, calligraphy necessarily, but they're super fun to use. So I'm like, why not? Fair. Totally cool. Actually, glass dip pens are good for monoline type of scripts, which is, uh, Spinserian's not technically monoline. I'm just doing it like that right now because, like, I don't really know how to do Spinserian correctly. <laughs> I'm, like, I learned it, but I haven't really practiced it. Um, I usually do things that have more like this, although this is matter as which is also a bit different. But, yeah, super fun. Super fun stuff. On Thursdays, usually I teach, too, if you want to learn copper plate calligraphy uh the streams that i did because i did nine that are like actual like teaching structure uh i re-uploaded them to youtube if you want to go and learn free you can no pressure but there's a ton of free resources that are also not just me <laughs> online i also realized this is way too many lines way too many lines in between Horrible mistresses. Oh, Hong Dian, eighteen fifty. I don't know. Is that a nid? Because the fude, the fude no sake ones are usually marker ones, right? Am I crazy? So if my, my writing's going to look weird because I'm going to do a big A and then I'm going to hop it up and not have one, two, three, four lines. I'm going to do on the third because this is going to be like this. Uh, all right, let's do an A. Problem with me using gouache as my ink is that it dries on my tip a lot really fast. <laughs> so I have to be careful. Oh, the bent nibs. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you can link the Amazon link. I don't mind. Go ahead. Yeah, the bent nibs. I usually do pointed pen. Uh, I usually do copper plate. That's generally speaking my vibe. There we go. That's cool. That's a better line spacing. Uh, all right, let me see. I'm clicking your link. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, interesting. I've never seen these before. Oh, it's because, okay. It's more of a fountain pen, that's why. I don't have any fountain pens. Um, I usually use like dip, dip pens. But yeah, I mean drills. Drills are the best way to go. Like working on, like just repeating the motion. Uh, a something that I can I can uh, suggest is after three or four strokes of whatever you're trying to practice, stop, analyze what you're doing, and then see what you can fix. Because you don't want a, a motor 
motor skill slash um, embed muscle memory that's incorrect into your hand. It sucks. That's so cool. I've, I don't think I've ever actually picked up a fountain pen. It's so interesting. That W sucked. That W was not good. The first one was much better. Like I said before, if you are looking to do Spencerian, I would highly recommend looking up uh, Martha Lawrence on Instagram. Uh, her Instagram is Martha Scribes. Yeah, she's great. I just never practiced my Spencerian <laughs> properly, so don't judge her work by how terrible mine is. <laughs> It's a, a kind of like business penmanship a little bit, if uh, you've heard of that, American cursive. They're all, uh, I feel like they're all kind of linked together. Oh, um, you can you share your link trade of mine. Um, I don't use Twitter. I have a Twitter. Uh, I can count on like both of my hands how often I use it though. It's just not, it's one of the social medias where I'm just like, I don't really go on it very often. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I appreciate. Uh, This is going to be not so fantastic. I'm, I literally might just straight up switch into a pointed pen. <laughs> oh, uh, you can just call me by my first name if you want, Erin. Uh, but I'm a, a she, she or her. So if you want to go that way, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, thank you for asking. I appreciate it. But, and yeah, definitely, Liz, you absolutely have to be super consistent with lighting and spacing. I'm like looking at this going like, my spacing is so wrong. My spacing is so off right now. <laughs> I think I, I'm literally like going to give up on trying to do spin series because I'm like, this is not cool. I'm going to, I'm going to hate this when it's done. It's not going to, I'm just going to be really like picking it apart. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to copper plate. I think I'm going to finish my, my stanza of my song. I'm going to go right to copper plate. Go back to my comfort zone. Uh, Aaron, E-R-I-N. And uh, propping open a Dr. Pepper is a pretty good reason to miss a name. It's fine. Uh, also, Liz is a delightful watercolorist. P.S. If you want to do some art stuff, just FYI. Going to throw that out there. I'm glad that you think it still looks pretty. <laughs> I'm like looking at this. I'm like ripping it apart in my head. I'm like, this is terrible. This is the worst.
All right. I gave my, I gave it my good old college try. I'm going back to <laughs> going back to my good old point of pen. Got to do it. Actually, you know what these are good for? These are good for like doing things like this, honestly, not to complete shit on them, but um, they're good for that. And they're good for straight inks that are coming right out of a bottle because you can just dip and go. So I think those are fun. They also, I mean, they also look really pretty, which is great. Super nice. Oh, plenty of learning Greek. Wow. Good for you. I, I only know two languages. I know English and French, and that's it. By the way, if you're wondering, the nib I'm using is an EF principle, by the by. Monsieur Jacques, vous dactylographiez bien mieux que votre ami Wolf. Ah, fair, that works. I know uh, the, oh God, it's the, uh, vous portez un cigar? Something along those lines. Oh, Liz, do you speak? Um, oh, yes. The, 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 so, Liz, sorry, I just saw what you had written. It does look magical. It feels like a wand, which makes me feel like I belong in Harry Potter, which is cool. That is always fun. But the, the reason I know French is because I live in Quebec, so I you kind of have to. <laughs> or uh, you, you don't get by very well if you don't know any at all. And Liz, do you speak Spanish? Is that why you said hola? Or hola? I think the one is like something like the pangram I know it's like quand vous portez le vieux whisky something like about old whiskey that's something along those lines oh fun no I, I so I say I know French I'm not perfectly bilingual by any stretch of the imagination I understand 99% of French when it's spoken to me, but I think in English, so it's hard for me to respond back as quickly, especially now with COVID, uh, everyone's working from home. So I just, I don't have as much exposure to French as I, as I used to when I was working out of the house, so. Oh, Tagalog, Tagalog is so cool. I used to work uh, somewhere where there was a bunch of people from the Philippines who used to work there. And I would just walk into like the cafe, like the food area where like before the, when the shift changed, cause like everyone from the Philippines for whatever reason were always on the same shift together. And I would just hear like, I was like, what is this language? I've never heard it before. It's so cool. Very cool. Also, uh, sorry, it's, it's Mar Productions. Do you have like a, a preferred like shorter version of your name that you prefer me to refer to you as in the chat.
Oh, Mar, perfect, will do. They also, by the way, the, the people I used to work with, they introduced me to some fantastic food, I have to say. Uh, I don't remember because the way that the shift changed worked, they would usually come in at around 4.30 or 5 o'clock where their shift started at like uh, at 5, uh, sorry, at like about a half an hour after they would get in. So they would always do like a potluck every single day. When I, and, I, and as I was leaving, I was like, they're like, like can I, can I, can I try? Like, I don't know what you're eating, but I like, it smells so good. Can I please? And they're like, please come sit. And they would just like give me a plate of their food. I'm like, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> I have no idea what I was eating. I don't remember, but it was so good. I just had a great time. But uh, yeah, Mar, that was that's actually really interesting information that that's how they would like test their test their machines with by using like a French pangram. That's kind of cool. I've actually I've never heard of that one either too, which is uh, interesting because I feel like I've heard all of them. <laughs> Fried spring roll. Oh, love a good spring roll. Love, amazing. I'm gonna have to start making this smaller because I'm gonna run out of room on my paper. So it's gonna be tight and it's gonna be okay though. We're gonna deal with it together. That's gonna be really small and really tiny. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better what I'm actually doing. Huh. No, it's okay. It's fine. I, I appreciate you asking before, but it's, it's fine. As, as long as you're not linking anything, um, like, horrific. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. But uh, yeah, cool, very cool. You have friends and family living there, but they're from Alberta. That was where I used to work. I used to work up in Fort McMurray. So if you, yeah, there's a, a lot of people from the Philippines up in Fort McMurray working up in the oil sands. Hmm. I think that's such cool information. Very cool, Mar, thank you. I love learning. Learning is fun. Yes, there are a lot of Filipinos there. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, which is why when the shift change happened, it was like, I, for whatever reason, I, they all worked in the evening, like the, like the late night shift. So very funny. Yeah, I, I've looked and I've not seen really anybody, which is interesting because there's a few people who stream on YouTube and I'm su surprised that they don't also stream here. I've not, uh, I, I've, I've looked, I've, I've tried to convince some of my calligraphy friends to be like, guys. Come on Twitch guys, come on if you have time. You should you should stream here, it's cool. You get to like hang out with people as you go. But uh, no one's taken the, no one's taken the bite yet, so. There's a few people I've seen who do uh, like bullet journaling, which is cool. Because there's a, a guy who's like uh, an incredible calligrapher. Um, his name is Mike Ward. He's actually from Canada. He's from Vancouver. And uh, but he streams live every Thursday, but on YouTube. And I'm like, yo, you should totes come on Twitch, bro. Um, well, 
I mean, I actually don't know him. I know of him more than anything else. I watch, I watch with my like hard eyes and go like, wow, this stuff is so, so good. Uh, but he's, yeah, he streams on YouTube and it's great. Like if anyone wants to watch someone who really knows how to do Spencerian, like that guy is amazing. You can absolutely, yeah, show which one you have. I, I mean, I just did a little show and tell with one I have. I bought, I think I also bought mine on Amazon too. It was, I want to say like 20 bucks, something. It was not very expensive. Just know that I might not always click the link just because like I am actively streaming kind of thing, but. Oh yeah, exactly, like far from expensive. Yeah, no, it's actually shocking. So, like, either... Gla anything dip pen is surprising how much ink that you can hold in, in one. Um, well, I remember when I started, I was shocked. Uh, sorry. Once I learned how to do it properly, I was shocked at how, like, well it worked. Um, like, you obviously still have to go and dip, because it's not like a ballpoint pen. But, but yeah. Omar, I'm glad you're enjoying the vibe. It's very chill here. Very chill. Someone who would be hilarious on stream, and I wish I wish she streamed her calligraphy. It was is opening sin uh, or Chin Long. She's first of all, she's hilarious. Uh, because I just took her Madaraz class, which is what that one is. That's Madaraz. I just took her class on that one. And she's hilarious on, uh, like, presenting to camera. It's so funny. Um, but I just, I honest to God, I think she just doesn't have time. She's so busy all the time. But she was, a, I think, an art major, if mem memory serves correctly. So she has, like, incredible illustration skills that she uses with her calligraphy. It's amazing. Yeah, I found, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I have, um, oh, geez, what are these things called? These guys. Not automatic pens. These. So it's not really a fountain pen. But there's ink in them. I'm like getting cartridge and it's uh, like a broad edge. Oh, as I get ink on my hands, but it's a broad edge. So like you can do broad edge calligraphy with this one, like um, scripts like it italic or gothic or whatever. ones that I attempt and go, oh God, <laughs> I need to spend lots of time on this. Especially cause like I'm more known for pointed pen. So the other scripts that I learn are, are more for fun for me. And then maybe I'll end up offering it to, for, to, to my clients, but for now, copper plate and variations of copper plate are kind of where I live. It's where my, my comfort zone is. You can tell I'm kind of relaxing into it too because I, I am a dum-dum and I did not, 
Uh, I didn't do any warm ups before doing my stream today. Oh my god, you followed me everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Looks like something used for, oh, the, the other one that I showed you. Yeah, I, I have a feeling a lot of people you probably use that to like make logos and do fun things with them. And then uh, afterwards, we'll like put it into a computer and like fix them, fix the mistakes and stuff. But yeah, totally cool. Thanks for all the support, Mark. Appreciate you following me and all the things. <laughs> We're getting, we're starting to get like a fun texture in here. And by texture, I mean, actually, I'll show you. I was working on something. So in uh, both May and June, I'm involved in two separate style shoots uh, for calligraphy. Uh, well, sorry. It's not just calligraphy style shoot. It's like a full thing. It's just my calligraphy will be also uh, showcased. So I was working on something yesterday, just like kind of doing some practice. Uh, I'll show you in just a sec once I finish this sentence. Uh, to show you some fun like texture. Give me just a sec. This. So it's like a poem that's just essentially like straight up. Yeah, palette parallel pen. Thank you. Yes, that. Uh, but yeah, some stuff like this. This is really fun. I like doing things like this too because this this ends up just being like a backdrop for something but yeah I was just kind of fiddling with like spacing and line placement and how big my x height should be and etc cetera, etc cetera. so worked on that a little bit yesterday thank you so it's starting to get a little bit like that here actually it's actually fun you can see the whole shebang so you have some some nice script uh, changes here. So we have Madaraz into an attempt at Spencerian, a poor attempt at that. <laughs> and now we're back into Copperplate. Fairy, thank you very much. Super appreciate that. Uh, so yes, the, what, the pen I showed you before is a Pilot Parallel pen. I just forgot what it was called. So good call on that guy. The nibs, this is a nib. The nib is essentially the end of whatever pen holder you're, you're using. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's, that's what that is. I think, I think I answered your questions. Oh, I'll also, by the way, uh, if you're looking to learn, <clears throat> excuse me, more copper plate stuff, I do have a discord. There's not a lot of people in there. It's me. My husband's in there cause I test things and he, he tells me if things work or not. <laughs> And uh, Alaska, uh, Liz, you've been in chat with Alaska before, um, I, I'm pretty sure. But uh, a lot of times, like when I was doing my teaching stuff, um, as of lesson six or seven, I started uploading uh, things into my Discord that I had uh, done on stream. So, like some guidelines and uh, my exemplars. Yes, I can tell you totally do know your pens. Good job. Yeah, there's some free resources in my Discord if you're if you are interested. Yeah, Alaska, uh, she's funny. 
she was in my last stream. I think she was the only one in my chat, and it was just we ended up talking about like books <laughs> as I was teaching. It was kind of fun. Or uh, no, actually, as I was doing my Paramore lyrics from last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She streams Lego making, which was like, oh, that's so interesting. Uh, yeah, there should be a um, channel in my Discord that is for calligraphy uh, resources. So drop it in there. I don't care. Just make sure you put it in the right channel. If you ever, uh, if you ever want, if you ever have questions about uh, what, like the stuff this is, like I'm always, I am an open book. But uh, oh yeah, so uh, actually, Liz, I I followed your Instagram. Oh. Yeah, you can absolutely take my Discord code. I think, do you have access to it? I feel like you do. I feel like you probably do. If you don't, because I only set up my Discord semi-recently, so I'm still kind of like learning the ins and outs. Um, I think you can access it. If not, let me know and I'll drop it in the chat, I guess. Um, but yeah, Liz, like I was following your watercolors. Girl, hello. Like, I need to take a leaf out of your book and figure out, like, how the hell you make those things that look so nice. <laughs> like, ridiculous. Yeah, perfect. Have fun. Drop it in your link tree. Enjoy. I think your art style will come with with like practice I guess um, and I the reason I say that is cuz I think okay so this might be a controversial opinion so controversial opinion incoming perhaps I think people are maybe maybe a little too obsessed with trying to figure out what their style is it will come my I, because the reason why I say that is, I mean, I guess specifically to calligraphy, you learn specific scripts and there are worlds within those scripts. And all, it's only once you start learning them or quote mastering them or whatever that you feel comfortable breaking those rules to like make your own style. But that's never going to come at the beginning. Um, and you're always going to be like emulating someone at some point even if by accident sometimes like I'll have seen something months ago I won't remember but um, I'll do it and be like this looks familiar but I don't remember where I saw this from like art especially art stuff it's so like fluid I guess which is also why I don't mind sharing the stuff in my discord like my exemplars I mean anything that I have done has been done by a gajillion other people um especially with copper plate and especially with calligraphy specifically um like you can get off of uh 
IAMPIF, which is the International Association of Master Penmen something, something, something. Yeah, exactly. Enjoying the process is always the most important, in my opinion. But, like, uh, there are so many calligraphy-specific things that are free online. You just have to look for them. Um, like, yeah, like I said, like, the IAMPETH website, it's I-A-M-P-E-T-H. If you go there and then go archive.org and just look up, like, copper plate or pointed pen or Spencerian or ornamental penmanship, or you're going to find, like, actual... Um, like from the old masters of like the golden age of penmanship, you're going to find their workbooks and how they make things. So I know that sometimes people can get a little bit precious with like their teaching. And I'm like, I mean, at the end of the day, most of the things are online for free, <laughs> like for real. So, but there's only one of me. So, you know, the information's out there. It's all good. But, uh, yeah, sorry. That was it was just my little soapbox moment of like my little my controversial opinion. <laughs> but yeah, if you don't like the process, like it's, you're gonna have a bad time. I've also repeated a word. This is what happens when I'm talking and I'm doing calligraphy at the same time. It's like this sentence seems a bit long. It's because I wrote this twice. Yep. <laughs> and like let's say you're doing art for like business or for work or something like that um how do i most people are not going to be an expert in whatever it is that you're doing generally speaking they will hire you because they like who you are um or at least that's been my experience. People don't always hire the expert in the field. They hire who they think is going to fit best with whatever vision that they have. So I think that that's kind of more important as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, and especially like it's the, one of the silver linings of COVID in my opinion too. And I, and I say that very, uh, very, very delicately. Cause I, I know that it's been really hard for people. So like, if there's going to be a silver lining of anything with COVID, like at all, it has to be the fact that so many resources are now available online. Um, like completely personally and anecdotally for myself, like I never, I've been taking so many classes and that I never would have been able to, to, to do or take from people that I love, that I've looked at their work and been like, oh my God, I, it's too bad I can't move to Hong Kong and like learn from, you know, X person. But now they're giving classes online. I was like, sick let's get in there um, and let's do that. So like I said, I, I say it with with trepidation and understanding that like not everyone has had that same experience, but like the, the tiny silver lining of COVID is the fact that there's just, there was already information online and now it feels like it's gone to a whole nother level of information that is given to people. And I love that. I think it's so fun to not have to gatekeep. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, thank you, Mar. Appreciate. Appreciate the love. It's so fun. Yeah, more time to learn new skills. That's it. That's it. That's it. But I also know that I'm in a very privileged position because I don't have kids. So I don't have to like worry about like daycare and stuff and like have to figure out like, what do I do with the child that's running around behind me and I can't learn anything, you know? Yeah, making friends online, which is really fun. Um, honestly, I never would have done Twitch if COVID had happened, probably. Do I have a random favorite word to write? Hmm. I usually write good morning if I'm testing something. Or I write Montreal because that's where I'm based. So I, because it's, it's a fun one. It's a good one. I know a lot of people do minimum. I literally hate the word minimum. It makes me crazy. Yeah, dactinographie is a good one because you have a lot of ascenders and descenders in there. Uh, happy is a fun one just because you have uh, three descenders in a row. So you kind of, unless they're exact, you have to kind of make them all a bit different on purpose because it's really hard to make them all exact.
Yeah, at minimum, it's too many waves. You can absolutely tell when your spacing is wrong <laughs> with minimum. It's a good one to practice, but it, I don't enjoy practicing it. Yeah, it's a good one. So actually, Mar, can I ask you, what uh, is there a script that you practice specifically? Fair. You would think by being a full-time calligrapher that I would have delightful actual handwriting. My handwriting, my real life handwriting is absolutely terrible. Yeah, that's true. And Greek has a whole different alphabet, I think, too. Or am I insane? Which is also possible. Yeah, having good penmanship makes probably learning calligraphy maybe a little bit faster. Um, but it, it, just because of one or the other doesn't, like, just because you have good calligraphy or good penmanship doesn't mean it translates always. But uh, I can tell you that the more scripts you learn, the more you understand the building blocks of how letters and scripts and alphabets get made, uh, which can absolutely help inform your own specific style. Arabic looks super interesting to write. They're, um, unfortunately, in my... In my um, in my guild, in my calligraphy guild in the city, uh, I don't think there are any Arabic calligraphers. Most, I think all of us are uh, do Western Western scripts. Um, but there is a, a girl in Chicago. Um, she's on Instagram, it's Devi Calligraphy. She's on like a mission to do, uh, to figure out more dev devnagri. I think that's how you pr pronounce it. Um, do that. There's another girl on Instagram, uh, Sweet Sincerely, she does Khmer. Um, and she does it like with, uh, she mixes it with, um, a Gothic, uh, penmanship and then she'll do it in Khmer, which is super fun. Yeah. And you can just totally do penmanship without having to do calligraphy. That's absolutely cool. That's cool. There's a reason why our penmanship porn exists on Reddit, you know? And handwriting love, yeah. <laughs> so I, you're very passionate about it. I feel like this is what this is what I'm learning. <laughs> Arabic is so is Arabic is really beautiful. Like I just wish I knew how to read it. I have just no idea. Um, but Arabic is really cool. Like 
everything is not wet, like wet, like because I'm surrounded by Western, Western, like scripts all the time. Seeing things that aren't Western is really cool. Well, you know what? For an addiction, it's not bad. It's not a bad addiction to have. You know, there are worse. <laughs> Uh, where am I? Here we go. Yeah, exactly. You totally get to experience some other uh, other um, cultures through learning the letters. Um, there is a series on PBS, uh, Nova, that was, I think, just called A to Z. Uh, I was going to say A to Z, sorry, the Canadian in me. Uh, a to Z. Uh, and it's with a, a wonderful, world-renowned calligrapher who is the host of it called uh, Brody... And I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose my the last name because I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's Nurenschwinder, I think. Anyways, that is an, a wonderful documentary series. It's two episodes. Um, a to Z. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> cool. Um, it's a wonderful documentary on uh, the alphabet. Um, coming from like uh, Egyptian and cuneiform uh, writing implements that they used, like from reed pens, and then the transition into metal nibs, and it's really fascinating. Uh, it's two episodes. If you're in the States, you can totally watch it for free. It's through, through PBS. Uh, but yeah, it's like PBS, it's, it's Nova, and it's like the letter A dash Z. Very cool. Yeah, so the Greek alphabet is very different. This is what I'm. This is what I'm. I'm seeing, <laughs> very different. But it's totally worth the watch, by the way. Yeah, uppercase, lowercase. I I'm looking at that going. Cool. <laughs> very cool. I would never be able to do that. I have. I'm not great with languages, to be honest. The only reason I know French is because I grew up in Quebec, and you have to, and you learn French from a really young age. And my husband is French, so I have to speak French with his family. It's the only reason I know it. I have a terrible brain for 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 languages. <laughs> it's like the worst. It's so interesting because some like yeah, the Greek alphabet is like crazy. It's very cool though. But if I'm without you, here we go. The, that C looks like a C C D that's in French to make a to confirm that a C is a soft C, so it sounds like an S. Oh, thanks, Liz. Thanks for dropping that link in there. Totally worth a watch, guys. Totally worth it. It's super informative. It's very interesting. If you like letters and you like learning and you like like alphabet stuff and very very cool. Actually, there was, um, so the Society of Scribes, which is the uh, New York Calligraphy Guild, during the holidays, they hosted a free, as normally they do like a winter, um, like, I don't know, winter spectacular, I guess, for calligraphy. And they, um, they, they did everything online. It was all free to watch, which was awesome, super fun. And, uh, there was someone who was talking about um, calligraphy, but using uh, braille dots as art as well. And I was like, that is so fascinating. Like that someone could think of using braille dots as like art, but also as like a functional like language. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, the Society of Scribes. Yeah, it's in New York. It's the New York Calligraphy Guild. There's, um, there's guilds everywhere. There's like, uh, geez, how many are there? 
If you go on, is it calligraphy? I'm going to look it up. Hold on. You'll see the worldwide list of calligraphy guilds. Uh, uh, guilds. Let's see. It's calligraphile.com. And I'm going to drop this link in the chat. Here, 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 there. Uh, so that is uh, a worldwide list that's pretty well updated. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they have a list of all the calligraphy guilds across the world, uh, which is awesome. So very cool if you want to look into that. It's very awesome. Uh, oh, what's my favorite ink? Mm, that is a tough question. How do I answer this question? It depends on what the job is, I think. Ah, <gasps> oh, yes, there's a TikTok uh, channel from a museum in which they are obsessed with doing like lit like old school printing of stuff, and it's very cool to watch. Very cool. Letterpress printing, amazing. Love it. Need to learn how to do it. <laughs> very cool. Very awesome. There's actually something I was talking about in my last stream a little bit of um, there's a lot of variation coming back into style right now with people who do calligraphy because so the, the from what my understanding is how this worked was obviously penmanship like this existed before the printing press right so people were writing by hand but then the printing press came into existence and what was really difficult was doing a lot of the ligatures right because ligatures are different depending like this or like like a I'm doing like a fun little something with the T. It's hard to, to be consistent with that in every single word. So a lot of the ligatures got lost when the printing press came into, into existence. So now, uh, like, you know, so fonts and things like that, um, when the computer came into being, like fonts and things, like were always very simple and tried to keep it very like logical. But now people are trying to, starting to get back into like penmanship so a lot of people are looking back into like the golden age of penman, penmanship. And let me, actually, let me pull this out. So this is called the Universal Penman. I think it's available free online now. Uh, I just ordered mine from Amazon, so I have a hardcover. Uh, so, and this in here, this is all like beautiful script, like stunning, beautiful, gorgeous. And these were engraved into copper plates. And then this was the thing that you would get onto paper, right? So these are all the engravings things. This is amazing. I, I, I'm 99% sure this is available free online now if you go to like archive.org. Uh, it's called the Universal Penman. So these are all engraving plates. Uh, it's stunning. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Like this is a great reference for beautiful, talk about gorgeous penmanship, right? Um, but now, like I said, I think with the advent of a lot more people trying to like get back and like do things by hand, a lot of those ligatures, like a lot of people who make fonts are trying to figure out like, how do I make a font with like these ligatures included? Um, so I think it's really interesting the way that things are moving. There's a couple of magazines, there's a, a magazine called Type Magazine that um, is interesting, talks about things like that. Um, there's a couple of calligraphy magazines, one's online, one's called Calligra it's called Calligraphy Crush, which is an interesting resource. It's a, you can download it onto your iPad and stuff. But yeah, these are absolutely beautiful. Like, very cool. And like learning and figuring out how to do this with a pointed pen is like really challenging. Cause you have to figure out like, oh, if the, if the shade is here, that means that's where it's going down. So you're going up and then you're pushing. It's very, it's, or you have to like rotate your paper, trying to figure out where like you want to emulate that. It's very cool. Um, the, Another book I like to use and see. It's it's kind of like the the growth of um, like penmanship to type to fonts and then back to penmanship and then everything kind of interacts with each other and they all influence each other. Kind of like that. So with uh, type and fonts, especially at the beginning, everything was very standardized. Uh, but now, I don't know if you've ever looked at like, it's just like the Google fonts, like the free ones. They're so interesting to look at because like you can see like, oh, this person was maybe a little bit more like trying to get a, 
a bit more fluff or maybe they're they're in they're influenced by a penman from back in the day it's super interesting how things kind of influence each other at the same time uh this is also a really fun one I, liz you may have been in the chat where i've mentioned this book before this is like a really fun one. it's called Dec decorative alphabets and initials um so in here, you have some really old school uh, full alphabets, which is really fun. Oh, sorry guys, I just have a phone call coming in. One second, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Apparently today is the day of phone calls. So there we go. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, this is what I, well, I mean, this is what I do for my job, right? So like, I, yeah, I'm going to totally be enthusiastic. I'm like, this is so fun, guys. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyways, yeah, I want to show you. So this, this is very cool. My, one of my favorite alphabets that I've ever found is in this book. Um, so, so first of all, this is sick. This is super cool. Can you look at this for a second? Like, this is amazing. This is very cool. Um, yeah, I just, this, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm in awe of this one. I can't, I can't handle it. But my favorite one is, where are you? Is this guy. This guy is so pretty. Look at, at all the fun flourishing on the side. Like, can we just talk about that for a second? Like, look how pretty this is. I want it. <laughs> I want to I want to learn how to do this one. Um, yeah, like for sure. If I can figure out how to make this and then like frame it, it would be amazing. Be amazing. I would be so excited about that. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily use this in like every day, right? It's for sure. But a lot of these ones are just very cool. Like they really are like it's like a fairy tale, right? Like when you start a fairy tale book and you'll have like a big letter like illuminated. Very, very, very cool. You know, you have things like this definitely feels like this should be in a, in a fairy tale book, like at the beginning. And like, look at that gigantic bee. Isn't that cool? Well, I'm also very enthusiastic about this because I'm like, my husband has heard me rant on about these things like a gajillion times before, but like in real life, I, um, you know, my friends, my friends will just not along and be like, uh-huh. Yeah, it's great, Aaron. Can we like continue with our lunch now? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I like, I like that kind of stuff. It's really cool. And then like, now we're back to my sad things. Just not as good, but that's okay. That's fine. Uh, it might be called a drop cap. Uh, I know them more as illuminated, like illumination and like the illuminated letters, but you could totally be right with that one.
Yes. A passion for something is fun. Uh, and I'm just happy I was able to turn it into my job. Yes, because not everyone obviously can do that. think so that is too bad I you know what I I honestly I have a uh, I am biased a little bit because my Instagram feed is full of young people picking up uh, and doing things like that but it's one of those things of like you you follow what you like so like my Instagram feed is full of that stuff but it's definitely like, it's definitely not everyone, right? But I'm happy that you picked that kind of thing up. I think it's so fun. Yeah, exactly. Like, I could have kept this as a hobby, but it was just one of those things where I was like, I feel like I want to try and make it work. So that's the, the journey I'm on right now. Yeah, well, like, like look up, uh, I'm not sure where you are, and you don't have to, like, dox yourself or anything like that, but, like, don't do that, but... Um, Honestly, I would um, I would look up on that list and see if there's a calligraphy guild. Even if you don't do calligraphy, at least you'll have people to speak about penmanship with, and they'll kind of get it. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know if calligraphy is taught in a lot of art schools anymore. There might be only a few specifically. There we go. There are two. Yeah, I would honestly reach out to them and see if, like, you know, any kind of interest or... But a lot of people use like a brush pen, like the markers. It's just an easier, there's less barrier to entry for something like that. It's a lot easier for people to pick up and find. Um, whereas uh, like fountain pens can be a bit more of a, how do I want to put this? A bit more of a money, a monetary uh, like commitment for people. Yeah, that's it. Like if that's not what you like, that's fair. But like y the people who are younger on my Instagram feed that I see picking it up are usually picking up a brush pen. Like I said, because it's a lower barrier to entry, you can find them at most art stores now. Because because the, there is a, a more of a push, I guess, for it. It's kind of coming back in style. And I'm like, mm, look at me being a kind of cool hipster in their 30s. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I didn't I learned handwriting when I was in elementary school, um, like cursive, but I didn't learn calligraphy. That's really interesting. I only learned calligraphy as an adult when I got gifted some classes when I was in my 20s. But I think, I think that there are a few, particularly in England, that 
still teach calligraphy in higher education, like if you take art, uh, I think they still have them somewhere, I think. Film photography. I don't know what that is. Explain that to me. Oh, fil film photography. Oh. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I've also seen people, so this makes me feel real old, uh, where people are starting to try and get back and using disposable cameras because you can't just take 200 photos to get one good one. You have the one and that's it. And you can't see it until it gets, um, gets developed. And that makes me feel really old. Because uh, I was like, you mean the things that I used to use when I was a kid? Cool, those are coming back in style. Ugh, I'm ancient. <laughs> Uh, I was reading somewhere too where someone saw someone using uh, like digit like old digital cameras to like take pictures now and I'm like you mean the one that I still kind of use sometimes when I'm taking a picture of my art because it's better than my phone. <laughs> yeah, arm. Um, in some of my streams. At the beginning, I well actually in my teaching streams, I usually go through doing warm ups. Uh, that I do talk about using the whole arm. So if you watch it like the first, I don't know, twenty minutes or so of any of my streams on YouTube, uh, you'll see. And I, in my Discord, there is, uh, I'm pretty sure I uploaded. I don't know if it's a blank one, but my um, my drill sheets are in my Discord uh, that you can just kind of print out. Like you'll see my pencil marks on them, but you can just like write over that. But um, usually what I recommend is if you want to start using whole arm movement, use a pencil first. Don't go in with ink. Uh, it'll be a lot easier for you to try and learn that type of thing and break yourself of habits. Um, my, usually that's my, my, my suggestion is use a pencil and practice with that on just regular paper and try and not use this. Um, I do sometimes especially if I'm using I'm going really tiny you can't really use a whole arm movement when you're using an x height that's like three millimeters it just doesn't work you kind of have to use your fingers and your wrist but um but yeah <gasps> very cool you have a vintage cam and a film cam like those big suckers oh cool I remember when video cameras got really big when I was a kid my parents my parents used to film everything and I was like who are you showing this to I don't think my family is gonna watch four hours of us opening up Christmas presents at home mom <laughs> like I don't think so It's like very interesting to us to, to see that kind of thing. I, uh, but like I said, it makes me feel really old. It's fine. Uh, I would say brush pens and, and fountain pens are two very different things and they're for different purposes. Um, brush pens I find are like a little bit more mm, like loose. We're gonna go like a bit more of that modern calligraphy style. We're trying to make like a like a cute post on Instagram. We're making some fun cards for our friends. Uh, fountain pens, I feel like a bit more structured. Um, they require maybe a bit more um, dedication and practice to understand how to use them properly, generally speaking, I think. So it depends on what you're into. Um, I am medium on brush pens. I prefer a pointed pen, but that's what I learned on. So I find brush pens sometimes challenging because I'm like, why isn't it doing the thing that I want it to do? But it's like, it's not built to make, it's not built to make hairlines. Like that's just not how they're made. So that's kind of, um, except for the Fudenosuke pen that's like, or pen, the Pentel one. Cause it's, um, it's not a felt tip. It's like a rubber tip. So you can get kind of thin lines on it. Anyways, again, the ten the tangents are real in this stream, guys. The tangents are real. Will I ever finish my lyrics? I don't know, because it's like 1230. I've been streaming for like two hours, give or take. And I'm like, yo, it's lunch. I am getting hungry. <laughs> see if I can speed up my writing a bit without it being a complete shit show.
also you can always see me like touching up my 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 tops here I have a tough time squaring off my tops uh, consistently I can do it sometimes but sometimes I'm just like not today not today Do graphite two point perspective seams? Yeah, fair. Okay. Oh, that would be very cool. So I have a book that might be interesting. It's calligraphic drawing from the person that I name dropped before. Open inkstand and or chin long. So I won't go in it because it's a book that she made and I don't want to like show off all her things and all that kind of thing, but uh, this type of shit is so cool. So if this is something that is interesting to you, I highly recommend picking this up because it is very cool. Uh, where essentially like these are warm up drills more or less that you put into shapes and it's very cool. So that could be something that's interesting. But um, it's not necessarily like two-point perspective stuff, but it is using like a, a, a similar tool uh, to make art with. Mm, that's fair. That's very cool. Respect. But like I said, to be fair, I am, yeah, fair. I, I, I did not do like art classes like that. Well, I'm kind of lying. I did a couple of like certificate things, but I never, you know, like I drew like as on my own as a kid, but nothing too, 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 too crazy. Uh, like I understand the concepts of those things, but I've never actually sat down and practiced them. So like I did, um, like drawing from life with pencil sketching with like actual like models and like nude models and trying to figure out like that kind of perspective kind of vibe and then I did analytical sketching uh, a few years ago so that was fun uh, it was really cool and then I've recently t been taking a watercolor class with a calligrapher that's based in Montreal which is super fun um Cause she's a like a I didn't even like I know her personally and I didn't realize she's like a world renowned watercolorist and I'm like Lorna okay <laughs> I feel very privileged learning from you now um because I knew her before I realized like I knew that stuff because she was in the calligraphy guild so I know her from there and uh she's trying to teach us these things I'm just like oh man all right I had no idea like color theory and stuff is like still kind of new to me it's really fun and interesting to learn um because I have paint and I usually use paint as my go-to thing. So oh, actually, sorry to answer your question about favorite ink. So it depends on for what specific, uh, what the job is. If I'm going on black paper and I need white, this stuff, which needs to be diluted, which is what I'm, I've diluted it in this guy with a bunch of water and it's on my uh, magnetic stirrer, which is off camera. If I'm on, if I'm looking for some gold, fine tech is great. Um, but generally speaking, I don't use ink. I usually make my own with gouache. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's everyone shows that one. So it was this guy, it's a mix of the PH Martins and the Schminky Calligraphy gouache. Sorry, I'll show it the correct way up, this guy. So it's a mix of this one and the Dr. P.H. Martin. It's the best one at being opaque on black. And I have a few other ones and it's just like, it doesn't, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. 
Uh, it, just needs to be, it does need to be watered down though pretty significantly because it's what you glue peach use out of the bottle. Um, but yeah, I don't usually use ink. I usually use paint. So to answer your question, it's kind of depends. Really. The only time I use actual like ink is uh, if I'm using my glass pen. That's pretty much it. Just because it's, um, it's just easier. Because it's already the correct consistency and I don't have to water things down so much. Sorry, I had forgotten you would ask me that question. Like, it's good. It's a good ink. I like it. That P.H. Martin men, they know what they're doing. But I think every calligrapher ever who has to use white on black or white on a black, like a darker opaque color, no, it's Dr. P.H. Martin's. That's it. It's the one you go for. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a bit hard to get a hold of over here, though, because um, generally speaking, uh, it's hard to get a hold of the easy, the supplies in Canada because um, not all art supply stores carry that stuff here. I thankfully live near uh, a big urban city, so a lot of the calligraphy supplies are I can find. But the Dr. P.H. Martins I have to order from John Neal, uh, John Neal Bookseller. And worrying about the conversion from Canadian money to American money, and then also having to pay for shipping and then also paying for customs is a pain in the butt. It's, it's really expensive, so I try to avoid it as much as possible, even though I love uh, John Neal Bookseller. The, 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 it's uh, the Quinky, Quink, I think it's called, I think it's pronounced Quinky. Qu quinky? But yes, the Pelican stuff is always really good. Uh, sorry, Parker, Quink, Blue, Black. The Noodlers I've heard of, really good. Um, Pelican, I have, Pel I have. well, there's a store that sells a lot of Pelican ink here. Um, Quink is quick drying ink. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, but Pelican, I know of that one. But yeah, I don't really use ink. A lot of people do. I don't. Uh, gouache is usually my go-to just because I can make whatever color I need. But it makes total sense that you would use ink if you're coming from a fountain pen because I don't think you, could, you should put paint inside of a fountain pen. It would make no sense. Actually, there's one ink, I'm just trying to think, I'm just reflecting. There's one ink that I that I have at home here that I do like, however, it ruins my nibs really fast. Um, it's this guy. It's the McCaffrey's. This guy which is uh, Iron Gall, which is beautiful. I love, this is really, really beautiful. However, Iron Gall eats nibs, eats the metal on them really, really fast. So as much as I love it, I don't really use it. So yeah, Iron Gall ink is really uh, corrosive, is the word I wanna use on, uh, on nibs. Well, like, gouache is paint, right? And it is thin. I just thin it with water. But it doesn't damage anything. I mean, nibs are also meant to be tossed. They're not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, um, they're consumable. They're like two bucks. You use them and you discard them. Yeah. 
The uh, the challenge with the glass to pin though is I can't get the thins and thicks though because that's not how it's meant to be used, right? It's meant for more model line work. Like I said at the beginning, like not to not to shit on them. I think that they're fun, but um, for someone who does this for a living, like the the glass pen is more. It's a fun tool, but it's not something I would use all the time. Yeah, exactly. Like it's kind of like using. I can use watercolor too. If you if you make it thick enough, you can use watercolor as an ink as well, and it doesn't do any damage. Um, the inks that are difficult to use are acrylic inks. Because if you're using acrylic inks, then you have to, because it dries and it's a permanent one. Or acrylic paint, rather. You can use acrylic paint as an ink. I would not suggest it. It destroyed, that destroys your nibs. But nibs are, um, are like I said, they're consumable. You just kind of, um, yeah, like you just, it's a consumable. Yeah, with the glass tip, yeah, that's like, fo it's called folk calligraphy when you do it like that. Um, I'm just not willing to do the work <laughs> to do that most of the time. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Like this already takes forever. Um, but yeah, you can do folk calligraphy like that for sure. Absolutely. A lot of people use them for bullet journaling. It's totally fun. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Like you can, like I said, you can use acrylic paint and acrylic ink and all that kind of stuff. But that's really damaging because it's it's permanent, right? Usually I even suggest to people to not use permanent, uh, permanent ink. Like um, Chinese ink. Don't use permanent ink, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Uh, there's no point, in my opinion, and it just damages, it like, it eats through your nibs really quickly. Even though it's a consumable, it's like one one use and you're all, it's almost finished. You can't really use them anymore. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the, gla the glass pen for me is like a, it's a fun tool to use because um, it looks pretty and it captures some fun light and it's fun to take videos of and all that kind of thing. But um, I, I wouldn't necessarily use it for like a, a, some, a job that someone hired me for. It's kind of more like a fun thing, like, as a, like for me to use on the side. But yeah, using it for ink sampling, that's sick. It's awesome. It just, I guess for me, it doesn't suit my needs for what I would use it for. Actually, Liz, question. Do you use uh, gouache for any of your watercolor stuff, like to make things more opaque? Or do you only use uh, watercolor for your paintings? Cool, because I know I I know that you can water down gouache pretty to make it watercolory, but um, awesome, I can I can respect that. Cause I I I only know watercolor and gouache because I use it to make my inks. <laughs> I don't really use it um, like to paint, or I I've started to now I should say because of my class that I've been taking. It's been quite fun. in the same line. They are friends. That's what I've discovered. They are friends. Yeah, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be wrong. I think the difference between the two is gouache usually has like a, 
uh, white chalk or something mixed into it, which is what makes it opaque, I think. I think. But again, I'm not a paint expert, so I don't know. Oh, thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. I've and I've enjoyed the conversation back and forth. It's been great. So go get some shut eye. I hope you enjoy your glass pen. Uh, when you when you get it, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll get the I'll check the notifications after I'm off stream. And uh, very cool. I'll uh, I'm 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 curious. I'm curious what you do with it. I'm really excited to see you do some stuff. But uh, go get some sleep. Enjoy. And uh, I hope your package comes tomorrow. Fingers crossed. <laughs> And yes, gouache really is very jelly-like in texture because it comes in a tube most of the time. So I add a lot of water. Like you don't need a lot, it's very pigmented. It's very, very pigmented. Yes, talk to you soon. Actually, if you do anything fun, put it in my Discord. There's a thing for art. Love your guys' art, so share there. Good night. And my, my lyrics are almost done. I only have a couple lines left. Yes. So I'll be able to eat <laughs> before going to my very important hair appointment later. Which is the reason why I was streaming actually so early today. It's because I was like, I didn't want to miss my stream. Like, I didn't want to miss it because I missed last Thursday's. But the appointment today, unfortunately, was in, only in the afternoon at the same time as my stream. I was like, all right, I'm streaming in the morning. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, it's fine. I like the, the, the chatting is part of the reason why I stream. But I appreciate the concern. <laughs> but it's fine. Honestly, if I don't finish it, I don't finish it. It's not the end of the world. Half of the fun of, of streaming is is interacting, right? So if I if I was doing something that had like a hard deadline, I don't think I'd do it on stream because I would risk a lot of like potential errors and, and all that stuff if I'm not like uh, like right here where I repeated this twice. Yeah, like it happens. <laughs> so this is why I think I do things that are like low risk. That's just for me, and it's kind of fun. The 
thing I'm just concerned about is that if my stomach rumbles, that you'll pick it up. <laughs> you'll like my mic will pick it up and you'll hear it, which would be really funny. It's meal time and then my getting my hair did time. That's that's the that's the thing I'll be doing today. Very exciting. So I'll be getting it cut because right now it's a bit um it's a bit I mean it obviously I have short hair, but it's for me it's getting a bit long. I feel kind of like a troll doll. <laughs> like a little bit. Um but the color isn't right anymore because I, I usually go I usually go platinum like white pretty much but with my roots are usually purple like a dark purple it sounds crazy but it looks nice uh in my opinion but um because i had let my hair grow during covid and i just gotten it cut and i didn't get it dyed um my natural hair color is um a, kind of like a dark auburn like i'm a natural redhead so it's really hard to bring it back to that platinum in one shot so today will be Fingers crossed the proper color will come through and I'm going to be like my, back to my 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 platinum slash purpley kind of hair. Although maybe I'll go, uh, no I won't, I won't. I, if you go back in my streams that I've uploaded onto YouTube, there was one where I had like uh, uh, bubblegum pink kind of hair because my hairdresser was like, could be fun. And I was like, yeah, right. I, I wore it as like, I think this looks cool. I just don't know if it says it's me. Um, I it was like it was a lot. It was a it was a it was a pretty punch. It was a pretty punchy color for for someone in their thirties. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, my I'm I'm very looking very forward to my hairdressing appointment. I get a nice little head massage. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be nice and relaxing. Very exciting. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a shit ton of bleach. Um, and then a bunch of toner. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's my, that's my afternoon. Very, it's going to take a while, but that's okay. Because sometimes I work on the weekend. I uh, I don't mind the. Uh... The taking it a little easy on a on like a weekday. Yes, exactly. But because I have really short hair, bleaching the actual like absolute crap out of it doesn't bother me because I get my hair cut like every seven weeks. So. And I have really thick hair. My my hairdresser always com comments on it. She's like, "Your hair is so thick." I was like. Mm -hmm. So I, I can take a lot of like uh, damaging products and if I don't like it, I could just let it grow out. So it's very easy, which is great. Love that. When I, if I had my long hair still, because my hair used to be really quite long, maybe I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put it through so much. <laughs> I would feel like, oh no. But with it being short, it matters very, very little. Uh, all right, this is my last, my last phrase.
the girl. I am just looking forward to the head massage. It's going to be so good. Oh, good. I'm glad. This is how I got into calligraphy in the first place. Just watching people on Instagram do writing. I have one more word, which is the word bright. And then it's going to be done. It only took almost two and a half hours to do, like, not that much work. I'm glad I made the decision to like tighten up the lines though. Ta da! So it's a bit of a mess. That's okay. The fact that this took two and a half hours is kind of crazy. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. All right, so I am going to go eat now because if you haven't heard my stomach grumbling, it's definitely been grumbling. <laughs> I am like quite hungry. Thank you for the compliment on the flourish. We're good. I'm going to clean my nib off. Good, uh, a good penman always cleans their nibs. Should never leave ink on them, hanging out on them. Makes you go through them faster. But, uh, all right, let me switch. Let me switch to just my face. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, we talked about a lot of random stuff today, which is super fun. Love meeting you guys. Love hanging out with you guys. So, uh, I should be back Thursday. Uh, I will be doing kind of um, a mix of teaching and kind of just making stuff. Um, it was great. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be semi teaching stuff. So it's going to be kind of like how to break the rules a little bit if you want to do your own style of calligraphy, um, but still keep things consistent. So we're going to be doing that on Thursday. And like I said, there, fingers crossed we'll be able to do it on Thursday too. Um, if not, I'll be back next Monday doing more lettering. And I think a lot of people showed up on like, uh, in the morning. So maybe I'll start streaming in the morning instead of the afternoon. So maybe I'll just start maybe at 10 instead of 1030. So I don't run until one and I'm like, Ugh, I'm hungry. I'm dying. But, uh, thanks guys for popping by. Super appreciate you. I'm happy that you enjoyed your time Liz. super great. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe out there. Bye.